Let's abstract away um, GDPR specifically for you know for two seconds, and you know what is exciting about it. I think is having an explicit uh, you know relationship with the end consumer, and uh, you know making advertising a um, you know not an invisible force, but you know one that's sort of explicitly um, you know acknowledged by uh, human beings. As you know, I, I talk a little bit about sort of um, yeah, I'm happy to spent my career doing it. So uh, I actually feel advertising as a force for good is a, is a thing, right? It's the, uh, it's the you know, thing that is the engine of the economy, right? Uh, you know, lots of people building products and services, uh, connecting those things uh, to the human beings that you know, uh, might want those products and services is a good, right? And uh, you know, relevant advertising that like, is discovery and it's uh, you know, uh, engaging and it's an enriching experience. Like, you know, I talk about you know, movie, movie trailers uh, you know, are ads, right? And you know those little you know sixty second spots are in some cases you know better than the movie that you're you know actually you know going in and, and seeing, pays for free internet. It's the three percent of GDP that tells the other ninety seven percent what to do, right? Like advertising has uh, not done a very good job of advertising itself, right? And I think GDPR is this like wonderful opportunity for uh, you know really of the industry to basically say let's make all of those things that we're doing uh, explicit. And let's do the you know right things uh, you know with respect to the you know consumer trust and the consumer relationship in this uh, you know bi-directional relationship between you know products who make uh, brands that makes product product and services and the people uh, that buy them and uh, let's go ahead and do that right and you know I think of GDPR as a uh, you know uh, one uh, you know set of countries the EU has said like let's uh, you know make this exchange explicit go. And uh, it's a wake-up call to the industry in the sense of like, yeah, let's let's go do that, and you know, let's have a consumer bill of rights, and let's uh, you know be you know true consumer advocates, and let's use this as a motive force uh, to you know not just do it for the EU, uh, but to you know use use this and uh, you know decide that what makes sense for a global business is to have a global set of standards, have consistency in terms of how you operate, you know, uh, across the board, and let's know that we've got you know one you know example that we're allowed you know we're going to work. Shop uh, with a deadline and date certain to you know motivate us all to do the stuff that you know um, I think is I think is in everyone's best interest. Look, I think the fact that people are um, you know uh, having the conversations and having the you know the uh, working uh, you know working committees, working dialogues, both at the trade association level, so obviously IB and. Uh, you know DMA and ANA and forays in the U.S. and, and then you know global, global equivalents, um, the you know IBUK, you know EU, IBUK. I mean, there's a lot of people that are sort of involved in saying, okay, how do we interpret uh, the goals of the legislation and translate that into a, a set of technical requirements, a set of global standards, um, in order to actually you know operate and do business in you know in the, in the environment. And the pace of those conversations and the seriousness of them, of course, have been accelerating, right? So, you know, may have started, uh, you know, 18 months back, uh, but, you know, uh, as we move toward May, people are like, all right, like, uh, let's go. Let's, you know, write these things down um, and, uh, and start acting accordingly. And so I think you're going to see that, uh, you know, through. I think uh, some of the things that we are missing are, you know, uh, some true sort of uh, identity, um, uh, you know, standards. Uh, in terms of uh, you know the use of consumer data, uh, you know what's PI, uh, what's anonymized, what is the role of pseudonymous, you know in these things. That there's some definitions that continue, I think, to be um, uh, you know to uh, require uh, clarity, and that may not in fact come uh, pre-May, um, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, in in sort of real life. Uh, but the idea of global consent solutions, right, where the explicit relationship with a you know publisher to a uh, to a human being, uh, you know how that consent signal is uh, promulgated through you know the actors that are necessary in order to make an ad happen, right? To actually um, you know uh, create advertising that works, um, we have to create those uh, technical uh, specifications and maybe even those companies uh, in order to uh, to manage that. And it's nice to have a you know a deadline. Um, uh, to you know, again, motivate people to do something that um, uh, we got to do as a class. And of course, it's hard to uh, do things as a class, right? You know, lots of companies you know operate independently, operate in a silo. It's reasonably easy to uh, ask uh, your engineers to do X, Y, or Z. Uh, it's more challenging, of course, to uh, you know agree on standard uh, specifications that everybody will. Um, adhere to, um, and then to, of course, design code uh, that needs to, you know, uh, render or be uh, or, or be shared uh, by multiple companies um, in multiple regions. Uh, that is, makes it more challenging, but we're going to get there, right?
So how will GDPR change the way MediaMath operates, if at all, and are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going through a process of working with a lot of our uh, suppliers, and historically, you know, our supply chain, we're SSPs and exchanges, um, and, you know, right now it's working with them as a, you know, conduit effectively to the end publishers, uh, who themselves are the, you know, the sort of last mile to, you know, consumers, right? It's, uh, you know, we as human beings, we go, Look at, look at a website, read content, uh, you know, part of that, you know, value exchange for free content is, uh, you know, is uh, hopefully increasingly relevant and engaging advertising um, and great. And so uh, right now for us, it's about, you know, working with uh, our partners and working with publishers directly uh, in order to come up with those uh, standards that we're all, uh, you know, we're all comfortable with. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing now. Uh, how is that different? Um, no, it's, I mean, it's just a, it's an explicit, uh, you know, uh, conversation with, uh, you know, on the list of things that we're talking about with our publisher partners in terms of how their inventory, you know, makes its way into data-driven programmatic uh, marketing. Um, the consumer consent conversation is, uh, you know, uh, uh, top uh, front and center. And, you know, you know, having observed and been involved with uh, the programmatic world for so many years, do you think this will have the GDPR will have an impact on the players, the way things are done? In fact, some I hope so. companies may fail, new companies may come up. I mean, or not much at all. Or um, can you sort of I share so. what your thoughts are? I mean, I've been in the industry for twenty years, right? And the you know the consumer has always been sort of implied. And I think the idea that the, uh, the consumer, the human being, the person uh, who is looking at the ads is an explicit uh, you know, uh, audience I mean, uh, and uh, needs to be uh, solved for um, in a way that we're all sort of proud of given like when we're not doing the job of making the ads, uh, we are all in the business of consuming them. Right, like there's no, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, you know, actors and audience um, in in all of these things, right? And uh, having a set of standards that you know we as consumers and parents and children and friends and spouses and, and all the rest of it are uh, really happy with um, is the right time. And you know, probably on, you know, uh, when an industry is uh, you know five people and uh, you know three million dollars and it's you know off on the side and the technical capabilities are you know uh, modest, um, you know uh, probably okay for uh, you know it to just happen organically. You get to an industry that's you know uh, you know. Five hundred uh, billion dollars on its way to a trillion. Uh, the way that all digital marketing is going to get done, and uh, you know, having a set of standards uh, that are you know globally consistent, um, that are uh, explicit, that are written down, that are uh, you know transparent, and coherent, and posted on the website. Yeah, we should do that, shouldn't we? As the industry is sort of working towards this the GDPR, you're kind of working on some standards, kind of um, informally at the company with colleagues. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, well, all of the above. I mean, uh, you know, certainly with all of the you know uh, global trade associations, that's one of the sort of area, the nexus areas for a lot of this you know collaboration. And you know, Will Chobieri, our CTO, and Alice Lincoln, our uh, head of consumer advocacy. I mean, obviously uh, intimately involved in, in you know in those areas. And then uh, Louis Rothkopf is uh, basically our general manager of, uh, of media, and that's where again a lot of this uh, you know activity is is centered. And he's developed something that the internal code word is, you know, golden boilerplate. Um, but it's the, you know, it's this idea that we're in this uh, state of maturity in the market um, where, you know, the writing down, the normalization, the standardization of the terms of trade, um, you know, both in terms of how the entities do business with one another, right? Um, you know, how a, a media math talks to, um, you know, a Viacom or an actual Springer or a Globo or what have you, and trying to create some, you know, consistency, normalization, transparency, et cetera, around that makes a ton of sense. And the, you know, idea that the, you know, again, putting the consumer front and center, putting it at the top of that list um, is, uh, is, is important. And I, you know, again, I view it as a real opportunity, right? Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it feels, um, you know, rushed on one hand, it feels long overdue on another hand, um, but it's great motivators for, you know, people to, you know, effectively repaper um, how the industry works. Um, and, you know, doing it at a time where, you know, we've all grown up, like the industry is now at a size and scale and scope and it's got a trajectory um, that it's important for us to, you know, to do this. And, you know, you look at, uh, you know, Mark Pritchard, 
you know, last year, right, gets a lot of credit, and rightfully so, um, for, you know, kind of throwing down the gauntlet for the industry and saying, like, from a hygiene perspective, right, just from a cleanliness and a fraud perspective, like, it's time for the industry to, you know, do it right. And, you know, it can't be, you know, whose responsibility is it? I don't know. Like, uh, now it's time. And, you know, that was, you know, four principles. I think there are probably 35 by the time, you know, we're done that, you know, cross a set of standards that we can all look at and, you know, feel like that's that's the right answer for uh, the industry on a global basis, you know, now, today, but, you know, resilient enough to anticipate the future. And uh, if GDPR is the forcing function to make that happen, then go GDPR.